Uh, we have a couple of objectives to investigate the write, writing using peer written essays and explore with students the specifics and the mechanics of what makes an essay convincing, resonant and memorable. And so my, my theory is, is that if, if students are kind of reading and critiquing and sort of investigating their peers writing, it will help, you know, they'll help them develop their own writing. Uh, and also I wanna uh, be really, offer lots of uh, supports for using the call for articles so that students can write for the change agent and submit their articles. I think it's a great way to uh, help people see themselves as writers. So we're gonna talk a little bit about standards. I'm gonna give you a tour of our online resources. We might work in small groups, uh, depending on when we get there, what feels right. Um, and then we're also gonna, I'm gonna share a rubric with you for evaluating people's writing. And then we're gonna talk more about the current call for articles. So about those standards, uh, I kind of took the standards for writing and summed them up in four clusters that I thought were easier to grab hold of than some of those, the long involved language of the, of the, of the standards, which sometimes if you start to read those standards, you're kind of like, you know, I don't know, it's hard. You, you understand what each word means. You can kind of put it all together, but I, I thought kind of breaking it down into more plain English and kind of grouping things up would, would be helpful. And I want to keep these standards in mind as we go through this webinar today, because I want to keep touching back to, okay, we'll see how that exercise you know, did or didn't address the standards in a way that felt effective to you. So here's the four groups. One is that we wanna be encouraging students to be able to write arguments, you know, different kinds of texts, arguments, informational or explanatory texts and narratives. We wanna stress complexity at the level that's appropriate for them. So we don't wanna take a high beginner and go straight up to, you know, advanced levels of complexity, but we wanna push little bits of complexity that are appropriate for that level learner. Um, we want to write clearly, you know, be grammatical, use punctuation correctly, be organized. Uh, we want people to know their audience and speak to their audience. We want them to be able to plan, revise, you know, draft, redraft, use technology and, and the internet to produce and publish their writing and even to collaborate and interact. We want them to be able to do research. Sometimes with a change agent, you can actually do research just within one issue of the magazine. So for example, coming up, we have this issue on mental health. One project could be go read two other articles in the same magazine on, men on strategies for coping with a mental health problem. And then they're doing research, right? It's, but you're not sending them into sort of the great abyss of the internet or, you know, it's a contained, task and then they bring back you know the source the source they cite the source what information they got from that article and they put it together so one thing about having the change agent be thematically organized is you know you have a whole issue on play you have a whole issue on indigenous peoples you have a whole issue on on race or on um, hair or on mental health and you can send people that your students to get sources from within that issue um, also, of course, we want to be really, really careful about plagiarizing. Uh, you know, I get so many submissions, I have to tell you this little, little um, you know, editor's note. I get, I get lots of submissions that look like they were sort of cut and paste from various Wikipedia articles, you know, and it, you know how you can just tell that right away. And I, and I know nobody means any harm by that, but, you know, they want, they go off to research something and they go, oh, here, they said it really well in Wikipedia. Let me just grab it and throw it in the essay. Um, so we need to be really transparent and clear with people about not doing that, using sources, but not plagiarizing. What does that look like? What does that mean? How do you quote people? How do you attribute things to people? And then um, another important part of those standards is for people to write routinely in different ways, sometimes over extended timeframes, sometimes shorter timeframes, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, just different kinds of tasks, you know, there's lists that you might need to make, there's uh, an email you might need to send. There's an important, long, well-researched essay that you might need to write. You know, there's different kinds of writing. So having your students do all those different kinds of writing. Um, these are all the kinds of things 
you want to be keeping in mind as you're teaching writing. And of course, you're not going to do all these things all the time, but you can have in the back of your mind, did I, did I, did I address that, that um, standard? You know. Okay, so how many of you know that the state of Rhode Island has a bulk online subscription, which allows you to get on for free and all your students can get on for free? You knew that, didn't know that. You knew that, okay. Yes. Does anybody, okay, so here's what I want to do. I would like, actually, if you could do this for me, um, Joan, if you have the PowerPoint there, go to this slide and then grab that link and put it in the chat. If anybody doesn't have the username and password for Rhode Island, I would love for you to go fill out this form, maybe even right now because I'm gonna want you to be in going into the change agent website. So this is a task where you click on the link, you fill out the form, and what happens is you get an email fairly instantly telling you your username and password. Now I could just tell you your username and password and that would be a lot, <laughs> sim that would be a, a lot be simpler. Easier. But no, nothing is like that in this world. We have to make you jump through mm. several hoops before anything can ever actually happen. But let me tell you the reason for the hoop. The reason for the hoop is we want to be able to report back to the state of Rhode Island that X number of teachers are using this resource, you know, to, to convince them, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Joan, that it's worth it to keep buying the bulk online subscription. So we like for teachers to register so that uh, we can report back to Rhode Island. And also you'll get, um, you'll, I think you will get a monthly email from me uh, with information about what's happening with the change agent. And that could be useful because you'll find out there's a new call for articles or you'll find out there's a new issue published and that kind of thing. So uh, it looks like, okay, were you able to put it in the chat, Joan? I can also put the link in the chat. Sorry, I messed up and oh, I'm not sure. And I'm not sure why I didn't, I swear I, <laughs> it's like, I swear I copied this. Um, oh, okay. And I got it's something not, totally different. I don't know. It's totally fine. Yeah, I did too when I put it in, Joan, but now I just got it. So how bizarre. Cool. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, when a tree falls on your house, you, you get a pass. <laughs> I, I did say it missed me, right? <laughs> Cheap. So let me put the link in. And um, if anybody doesn't have the username and password, could you just click on that link and fill out that form right now? And while you're doing that, I'll assume a handful of you are, are doing that and a handful of the others already have it. So Doug's saying he has his username and password in a notebook in your, oh. <laughs> oh, so you want me to cheat and just tell you what it is? Is that what you're saying? Ha ha ha, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you don't mind, uh, Billy, I'll just take you a second. Um, and then if anybody's not filling out the form, did you have any questions about what I've said so far? Thanks, or any Bill. questions about anything else? Um, the, ups, the person in the third floor apartment is now doing his indoor workout. So I feel like a tree is falling on my house, but it's just somebody doing their indoor workout. All right, so let me go back to sharing. All right, so hopefully all of you were able to click on that and, um, and get, the, uh, get the username and password. And if, if somebody doesn't have it, then I, I'll just, I'll let you know what it is. All right, what I wanna do now is just take you around the change agent website. So a lot of you are familiar with the change agent and how we do things. Uh, but just, just to remind you that on our website, we have PDFs of all of our back issues. So if you've been used to getting hard copies and you know, it arrives in your hand and you can flip through it and that's great and you make copies of what you want, that's not happening anymore. We're not printing any more hard copies, but you can always go to, if you want to approach, if, you, if you're curious about a theme and you want to bring a certain theme into your class, you can look at our back issues and see that we have this just brand new issue on mental health. 
our fall issue on the pandemic, very powerful. The stand up and be counted issue is mostly about the census and about the election, but there's other articles in there about the idea of standing up to use your voice. So if you're teaching something about civics, you know, there's, there's articles in there. There's the play issue, the indigenous peoples issue, math, hair, our career pathways. You can see all the different themes and you, you, you might be familiar with a lot of these. But you know, say your students are talking about transportation for some reason, you, know, you can go into this transportation issue and see if there's something there that's relevant. And then for every issue, let's look, let's look at this one. Well, for every issue, we have some similar things. So you, you have the opportunity to download a PDF of the whole issue. There's a table of contents and so when I click on that, I get to this table of contents and notice that I can sort it by level. That word level doesn't look clickable, but it is. So I can sort on, on it by level. So now if I've got beginners or intermediates, I can go straight to the pieces that are more likely to be right for my level, okay? And then over here, you can see that there is some of the pieces have head, headphones next to them. That means that the piece is available in audio. So you can click on the piece and listen to it all the way through by clicking on that play button, or you can listen to it in chunks. And then the student can you know, play one chunk, then say it out loud themselves, and they could play it again. You know, they, they can just take as long as they want with it. I have my students put this on their phone you know, so they can see it on their phone and have head, head, headphones in and they can just listen to it. And I give them a, a log and I ask them to keep track of, you know, which ones they've listened to and what stood out to them about it and what vocabulary they learned, things like that. Did you all know about the audio? Okay, so the audio is really a good resource for online learning. You can also, and I have teachers who do this, they download, um, let's say, let's say, uh, um, you can click here and save the, the audio as an MP3. And then if you have a Google Classroom or something where you wanna upload the audio into your Google Classroom, you can do that. So there's a lot of different ways. You can send your students directly to the Change Agent website and they listen to it right here. And when you do that, of course, you just have to give them the username and password. We don't make students go through that little hoop that I am asking you to jump through. You can just go ahead and give them the username and password. But, um, you know, and you can also do this other option of downloading the MP3 and then uploading it to your, Google, your, your online classroom. Does that all make sense? Another thing I like to show people is there's this option to, for example, let's look at this piece called Indigenous Peoples Day. And it's an a article about, you know, changing the name of Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. And underneath it, there's this opportunity to leave a reply. Now, one thing to know about this is I'm logged in as C. Peters, but you'll be logged in as Rhode Island and all of your students will be logged in as Rhode Island. So they won't look distinct from each other. So you just need to ask them to sign their name if they want or their initials or something. So then, you know, as part of teaching writing and digital literacy, you could have them, you could all read this article together. The assignment could be to go into the, this thing and leave a reply and then to, and the reply would need to be specifically about the article. And then they could also, you consider asking them to respond to each other's responses which is a good way to get people to practice doing appropriate responses, you know, reading what somebody else wrote carefully, responding in a way that shows you heard what they were saying and you're trying to push the conversation forward. That's a really good job and career uh, and, and, and academic skill, right? Like being able to pay attention to what's happening in an online environment and respond appropriately. And you can practice your writing. Um, if you make a typo in here, you'll get a little, uh, you get prompted to fix it. So that's another digital literacy skill, like knowing how to use that. How will you see what somebody else wrote? How would you see? Yeah, to reply it's just gonna, to that. It's just gonna show up and there'll be like a string of boxes. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's all of our back issues have all this have all this kind of content. They all have that, you know, that that set of resources. They have the opportunity to download the whole PDF. They have the table of contents that's sortable by level. Many have extras that you can click on. Um, they also have uh, they also there's a grid that shows how the articles are aligned to the college and career readiness standards. So if you if you're thinking, oh, I want to use this play issue and I want to be teaching to this standard, I'm pointing you to these pages that help you teach to that standard. And I've developed activities on those pages that speak to that standard. So if you're you could come at it by theme or you could come at it by standard. You could, as a teacher, you could say to yourself, I really need to be teaching more about, um, you know, about how doing research. So let me find an activity that is related to that. And you could go here and find that. Okay, so that's all the back issues. Uh, Cynthia, can I just ask a quick question? Sure. On, on the levels, how high does it go up to? I think about 12 and they're, they're grade level equivalents. Okay, great, thank you. And thank you for interrupting me. And I should have said at the beginning that I, I want anybody to unmute anytime you want and interrupt me with a question or comment. So speaking of levels, um, this the two tabs that I think are most important for teachers is this issues tab, which we were just in, and then this in the classroom tab. So in the classroom, you can see here's a little library of short videos, which is mostly me talking about how you can use the change agent to, to teach. So you can explore that library. It might be helpful to you. This is really important, this index with article reading levels and audio. This is a global table of contents. Remember the other table of contents, they were just related to one issue. But this is a table of contents that has all of the change agents articles going way, way back, way back. So it's hundreds of articles in here and it's sortable by level. So remember before in that whatever issue we were in, there weren't too many beginner level pieces because honestly the change agent needs to do better, a better job at bringing in more beginning literacy levels. But we do have a lot when you get them from all the different issues. So you find lots of level twos here and lots of level threes and lots of audio. So instead of coming at the content through the theme, you can come at it by level. And you can direct your students to this great big table of contents and they can make their way through all the level three audios, you know? And then they might see themselves feel more comfortable going up to level four. And so they get to sort of see themselves progress. Um, Cynthia, that, I'm sorry, that was under in the classroom? Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. It's in the classroom and it's the second blue heading. I also, since we are, we want to meet the needs of beginners and the change agent can seem overwhelming, I, I have pulled together a lot of different beginner type pieces and put them in, a, in some packets here. Here is the invitation to write for the magazine. And I'm gonna go say more about that later. And here are our lesson packets. Now these lesson packets are just me gathering up articles from different issues of the change agent and presenting them, giving them to teachers um, to teach from, you know, and in a different kind of a way. And one of those ways that we've been coming up with uh, since the pandemic is we're starting to put things together in Google Slides. So starting with uh, packet 23, <coughs> we have um, content arranged in Google Slides. So what this means is, let me click on one. How about this pandemic haircut? <coughs> and I'm gonna send you back later to look at these more carefully. So um, pandemic haircut. This is a story about a woman who gives her husband a haircut during the pandemic and she teaches herself how to cut hair by watching YouTube videos. You can download a PDF of the article or you can open it in Google Slides, <clears throat> which I will do. <clears throat> and I'm gonna have you come back and explore this more later, but what I want you to, the takeaway I want for right now is I want you to know that if you don't have a Gmail account, you can download, you can upload this to your, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm just. <coughs> <coughs> mm. 
<clears throat> you can um, <clears throat> you can download it uh, onto your computer and then save it into PowerPoint and adapt it however you want and then share it during your class. If you do have a Gmail account, you can make a cut. <laughs> God, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm afraid I think I'm gonna have to have you talk amongst yourselves. Here's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm going to share this link in the chat and I'm gonna change the order of things a little bit to take into account the fact that I'm coughing a lot. And I'm gonna ask you to do this little field trip that I'd planned, but we're just gonna do it out of order. So what I want you to do is click on the Google Slides. All of you should be able to get in, but you won't, you won't have view only. So you won't be able to make any, you won't do, be able to change anything on it. But I want you to, oh, I see all of you getting in, great. I, okay, so what I want you to do is just take a little time and explore how we have put this article into Google Slides. And I'm gonna turn off my audio and cough a little bit. Although I don't know how much of a discussion we're supposed to have, I have to say I'm surprised that each slide is so self-contained that that you could actually just talk about one slide, <laughs> do something with one slide. I agree. This is really, this is really helpful. <laughs> I can see using this. Mm -hmm. So could we share these Google slides um, either? I know on Zoom, probably we could, we could work with them, but if I were emailing students PDFs of the articles, is it possible to share the Google slides in the same format? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, you can you can um, you can take Google Slides and save them as a PDF. Great. Yeah, I haven't done that before, so I was just curious about that. That that is a nice format. It really is. Um, as Joan said, it's easy to focus on an individual panel. Um, also, just the way it breaks up the story. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you, I, I think it just makes for easier reading than sometimes dense text can. Yeah. Sure. So Doug, if, if you're on the Google Slides and you go to file, and I think it's either download or export, I'm not sure which, but it'll give you the, I, well, actually I can look and tell you. Um, yeah, go to down, if you go to download, you'll mm -hmm. see, you can do it as a, a PDF document. Yep. Can you just tell it print? And it'll go to PDF. Yeah, I mean, if I yeah, did... you can print. Yeah, you can do that too. My printer's hooked up, so it would go to my printer. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I can see it downloading. I can see the slide downloading, and all I'd need to do is upload it. You know, open it and yeah. print it. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, share it. But that's an interesting way to do it if you don't want to do the whole story, or if you have some students that can do the whole story, but some students who can't do the whole story. 
Oh. Which is often the case in many of these mixed level classes. Yeah, I would you know, think there so. Are, there are students that can write a story for change agent and there are students who are writing a sentence or two. Mm -hmm. You know, so it would be a way to in class in physical class space, it was so much easier for me to break students up into small groups than it has been remotely, but this might be a, a way of doing that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. So you had a I I, I also I did anyone get to the end and see the last activity where you know the the the, the mm -hmm. activity is to present something that you learned skills. during the pandemic. I just think it's a great opportunity for students to practice. You, you know, one of the standards was being able to use the internet and um, digital tools to present, and also collaborating using Google Slides is a great practice. A lot of our kids' school, you know, K through 12, everything is in, in Google these days, right? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. um, so parents get to practice in that, and so that they're less alienated from what their kids are doing, mm -hmm. you know? So, and, you know, that learning how to use images and, and, you know, giving instructions, it could be very simple, you know, very simple, how to <clears throat> how to cook something, how to make tortillas, you know, how to, and just what are the steps, you know, numbering the steps, you know, just the sequential language, you know, just all that kind of thing. And then they get to be an expert, you know, and present it and practice speaking and listening. So I just noticed too, I know students like to see, um, I just noticed in the biography, she's from Pawtucket. So <laughs> they always like yeah. to see, yeah, uh, local someone local. Yes, so I didn't even plan that yeah, that I way. That. I, know. I love I it like, when that happens by accident. That's great. Yes, that's a Rhode Island uh, student. Yeah, great. <clears throat> Did anybody have any more comments about any of that, about the, about the Google Slides? <clears throat> There's a little thing somewhere, the very last slide, it says, you know, if you do use the materials, you can take a short survey to let us know what you think. And the reason for that is we're experimenting with new ways of trying to put our stuff together. So if you have any feedback about it, we would love to hear. And I wanna be really clear that you have permission to do whatever you want to these slides. I mean. In view only, you could just take them the way they are and you could share your screen and go through them and you don't have to do anything. But if you think to yourself as a teacher, wow, I would rather break this up differently or I would rather add a quiz here or a little this here or that there, you can take it, adapt it, do whatever you want with it, make it yours. As soon as you make a copy of it in Google, it's yours. You, can, you have all the editing powers. So <clears throat> we're just trying to make things, you know, as accessible and easy for teachers to use as possible. While we're thinking about this, um, I want to point out that for Packet 26, you know, race is a, a big issue in this country all the time. It's been especially um, at the top of people's minds in the recent past. <clears throat> and so we put together these four Google slides. Uh, let me click on this one. Um, this one is about equality versus equity. And it's, it can be used for very, it's very multi-level. So there's some really simple things. I mean, there's this image, which is a very powerful image, which is also very, it's very simple in one way, but it's also very complex. Like it, it gets to the difference between equality and equity in a way that it's a fairly complex concept, but people are gonna be able to see this and understand what it means. And then there's even just this little vocabulary exercise, which again, as a teacher, you can amend this, whatever, you, but you can drag these boxes um, to label the items. So that's another digital literacy skill, dragging, you know, making new boxes, um, manipulating content, you know, not being afraid. Oh, I deleted it. Oh no, what do I do? You know, just all the things, you know, that, that um, so, um, yeah, this is just another one that you could you could uh, explore, and really relevant, but also really accessible. And uh, the thing that the change agent's always going for, which is, uh, you know, adults have all this experience; they have all this rich life, you know, and 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 to not to bring the the topics out that really matter and that are relevant, but not in a dumbed down way, you know, but in a way that's accessible at the same time. So it's kind of always what we're trying to do. 
Okay, so let me go back to the PowerPoint and see what I got here. <clears throat> Thanks for being flexible with me as I mm -hmm. made my way. Oh, here's the field trip. That's when we were supposed to do that. I made a slide with just some of the key links because I think Joan <clears throat> will be able to forward you a copy of these slides. And so I wanted you to just be able to have the links uh, in case you were trying to madly take notes. You wouldn't have to do that. You'd have them here. Okay, so let's, let me tell you a couple more ways you can use the change agent for, for writing. And then I wanna, then I'm, we're gonna do another kind of field trip where I get you to look at three articles from the pandemic issue. Um, but before we do that, I wanna say a little bit about the tales of resilience issue and the food issue. It's just I'm somewhat randomly chosen, honestly. I mean, it could have gone to any issue and found you know, ways to practice writing. <clears throat> so the, the Tales of Resilience issue is a good go-to issue if you want to try to uh, achieve that thing with, with your learners where you're using content that is relevant and reflects some of the challenges in their life, but also has a, an upbeat side to it and shows how people are kind of being resilient and, 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 and staying afloat, you know, despite how hard it can be. Um, as I said, for each issue, you have all the different options. I wanted to just remind you of that. Uh, and this one I wanted to share with you, <clears throat> um, this read option, which when you click on read, you get, so here's the article. The article is, is just very simple. How did you get here? There's pictures of three learners and they're answering the question, how did I get myself to class? And one person says it's his mother who inspires him. Another person says it's her son and another person says it's her friends. And the idea of this activity is that then you could put your own picture here and say how you, who helps you get to class. Well, it's not that we don't all have major challenges, but we also have things and forces and people that support us. And so the activity could be to go to that reply box, and this is how you can do it online and have the student reply in the box. Or you could have another creative way. You could set up Google Slides where each student has their own slide and they put their picture up and they say how they get there. And then you have a like class-wide presentation you know, on this topic. <clears throat> if you do it in this reply box, uh, remember I mentioned that it gives you the squiggly red line for, for typos. Um, so that's a, a very important thing to teach students about. They can right click on that red squiggly line and it will offer a correction. It may or may not be the right correction. We all know that spell check is not foolproof and that's a good thing to learn too. And it also doesn't catch everything. Like I misspelled nose and I think spell checker said, what the hell is that? I don't even, I can't, I don't even have a suggestion for what that might be, you know? So that happens too. So it's not foolproof, but it's a good tool, you know and you can, you can sort of teach them about it this way. And then in the food issue, <clears throat> There's this article by a woman who talks about her strategy for getting her kids to eat. And uh, she has a family rule that everybody has to eat everything on their plate. And you know, different families have different rules. And I think there's another article in this same issue where it's a different kind of a rule for, the, for her kids. But this woman has, this is her practice. Um, and I think it's a great discussion piece. I mean, all of us have been that child who, either did or didn't eat everything on their plate or we're the parent of the child or trying to get to eat. We've all been somewhere in this configuration. And what's, so it's gonna, it's gonna be relevant. She has a very clear policy. Um, so be, it's a good thing to bump up against, right? You know, what, what do you think about it? And, and then there's an activity where the first thing is to summarize the problem and the woman's solution to it in one sentence. Pretty hard to do actually. It's a lot for one sentence, but maybe that would be too hard. And I want to encourage you, I'm just me making stuff up at my desk. You know, I'm, I sit here, I made that up. As a teacher, you might say, great idea, Cynthia, but that's too hard for my students. And you just do your own, do your own version of it. Maybe it'll prompt you to come up with something different, or maybe you'll just want to take it wholesale or, or not, but um, feel free to just blow it up and do whatever you want with it. Um, and then also the number two is practicing with, you know, this because with the word because, you know, which a good, a really good thing to practice. 
you know, I agree with her solution because, you know, and then you could get them to use because in a number of different ways. Um, or I disagree. Instead, I would. So this is just another way that the change agent just takes like kind of a hopefully accessible, relevant, interesting article that you can have a conversation about and understand the vocabulary about it and then use these prompts to get people writing. Okay, and then the pandemic issue, I, I picked out three articles that I was hoping uh, we could kind of pay a little bit more attention to. And th these are the three articles. And so what I was hoping was, if you can log into the change agent okay, then um, you should be able to get these no problem. If you can't log in, uh, we just need to make sure we give you the user and the password and I can, I can put it in the chat. Or does anybody else wanna put it in the chat? If you know what it is? Got it. You got the username and password? Okay, well, you, are you putting it in the chat? I am. Thank you. So Rhode Island, all one word, password is change agent. All one word. Top secret, everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, so use that as your login. Go to the back issues tab, find the pandemic issue. Uh, you can either download it, the whole PDF, or you can just go to that table of contents and read the articles you know, one by one. But what I was thinking you could do is just choose one article and read it. And then let's come back and talk a little bit about how you could uh, use it to teach writing. Okay, wait. Okay, uh, can you uh, repeat uh, the pandemic? I'm in the pandemic issue, and what do we have to do? Okay, so well, the 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 pieces that I picked out for you are here. So the one on page twelve, page seventeen, or page thirty-two. And so, if one of those looks interesting to you, you could read it and think about how you like and read the activities that go with it. And then just sort of come back and, and talk about what looks interesting to you, what looks appealing, what would you do in the classroom with it? How would you use it to teach writing? Okay. Are we doing this individually or in breakout rooms? What three breakout rooms for the three? different articles. Yeah, I think we should just do it individually, honestly, just everybody, you know, pick your article. And if you if your eye catches some other article in the pandemic issue, and you'd rather read a different one, feel free. Um, okay. But these are the ones that I picked out as possibilities. So yeah, so everybody take a few minutes right now, find the article, read it, look at the activities, and then just come back and we'll have a discussion about how you might use it to teach writing.
Would another minute or two be okay? So, yeah, are you ready to share a little bit? What I would like to do is uh, just if I could call on you or if you want to just volunteer and then tell me what, tell all of us what article you read and what it was, you know, a little bit about what it was about and then what the activities were and, or, or, or what activities you might come up with. Anybody feel like going first? I'll go first. This is Elizabeth. Oh, great. Thank you. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. I read the- um, It's the hard bird. to hear you, Elizabeth. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, I read The Bird is Right. The Bird is Right, okay. Which was lovely. Um, <clears throat> and I- I peeked at the um, additional resources and I really like the coronavirus um, vocabulary. Um, and I'm a member of the East Providence Health Equity Zone. So it really got me thinking about ways that we talk with the community about, about the virus and safety protocols. Um, but the article itself was um, made me think about having students talk about um, what they're going to do for themselves, what their self care is. If you can't really follow your bliss right now at home, what can you do to take good care of yourself um, and make yourself feel happier? Mm -hmm. So I think creativity, having some sort of creative outlet with yourself or teaching your kids to do that can be really powerful. Yeah, what did anybody else read this one? Yes, I, I read the bird is right. Also, um, one of one of my takeaways was um, you could have a lesson on an idiom like silver linings and talk about how uh, even in times of adversity there are ways to be creative about how you live your life and um, possibly even do some things that you wouldn't have been able to do when you know when you were kind of committed to your routines prior to the pandemic. And um, a lot of the students that I had when we first, when we first took our break from the classroom last March, the emphasis was a lot on how much they were listening to the birds. Uh, <laughs> you know, the springtime in New England being what it is, it's, it, it was extremely loud, the birds, because there wasn't as much traffic, there were no airplanes. Um, and I just remember that sort of focus on spring happening at the same time that the pandemic was happening. Uh, and so this article reminded me of that. And I think it, it allows for a lot of avenues to write very ritually about some sensory experiences, uh, family bonding experiences, um, and sort of novel ways to live uh, during a difficult time. Yeah. I also um, read the, the Bird is Right, and I really liked it. Um, I think in th there's many things to take out of from this article from in terms of of reflection and personal uh, you know uh, self care and, and steps to take in, in, in a challenging situation. But in terms of writing, I I know I've I've used like a couple of articles lately uh, for writing because I was uh, teaching a writing class. And um, uh, one of the things that helped me uh, and, and, and from the change agent and this article is just clearly does that 
um, it uses, um, it paints a picture with words and, um, and using, like Doug was saying, all the sensory um, aspects and how, how can we select adjectives for sight and how can we uh, describe something um, with, uh, through the, the ad with adjectives of, of uh, taste and, and, and touch and hearing and <clears throat> all of the, and smell and, and, and also feelings. Um, and it's really this, this uh, quote, sinister clouds from the West upholstered the sky with darkness. It's, it's really powerful um, in, in many ways, but it, I like how the article at the end goes to, um, and obviously this would be for an advanced English uh, learner, mm -hmm. Uh, but it goes to, you know, what is figurative speech, what is personification, what is uh, metaphor, and, and, and um, goes into a breakdown of that, of that sentence, which is really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it, it would be helpful also to talk about point of view and uh, the story, how would it be told from the point of view of the author? How would it be told from the point of view of the bird? <laughs> be told? Yeah, well. <laughs> that's, that's a great idea. Somebody's gotta be the bird. <laughs> I really like that bird. <laughs> and yeah, and how would it be uh, told from the point of view of a narrator, third person from, from the outside in the park, watching mm. in the park? the bird um, and the yeah. and the author That's really and, and i think those those kinds of um changes of scenarios and point of view and lenses help also understand situations uh that are challenging in, in different ways and and analyze text um to read the word uh understand the world by reading the word mm. thank you um, for bringing Freire in yeah <laughs> i can't yeah shout out Yes. <laughs> Doesn't it, any, yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you, Christina. Um, anybody else, even if you didn't read this one, now that you've had a chance to hear about it and look at the pictures and anybody else want to say anything? I just wanted to comment on the, um, the is this a good job quiz? That's such a great um, this is such a fanciful article. And then to come back to um, looking at your own job is really smart. And sometimes the students don't really want to talk with me about work. So um, I love this idea of jumping from the article into a look at their own, uh, their own lives. And where do you see that? It's in the resources. Um, when you first click on issue, and then you click on the pandemic issue. It's one of the, it says issue extras, pandemic vocabulary, and is this a good job? Okay, I was wondering where you were, because I was just looking at the PDF and I wasn't looking at that. So that's great. Good, thank you for that, Elizabeth. Um, I, I guess I'm, I would add a couple things about it. One is it, as a writer, or well, first of all, you could think about this as a reader. What about that title? you know, the bird is right, you know, doesn't that just kind of affect you? Doesn't it kind of present a little bit of a mystery and make you want to find out how could a bird be right about something? You know, so just that to me, what, what helps us think of as writers, what is our title going to be? And how are we, what's our invitation to, to read this thing that I wrote? I get a lot of submissions of the change agent and the title is, you know, say that the topic of the issue is the pandemic. Well, I get all the titles say pandemic, but my, you know, a writerly approach to that would be to not just write pandemic, but would to take the whole title question very seriously. You know, what is the right title for my piece that reflects my piece, but also pulls the reader in. And I love how this creates this little mystery and makes you want to read it. Another thing going on here is just this fantastic dialogue between him and the bird. So it's a really great chance to teach uh, quotation marks and you know, the vocabulary of how you know, somebody replied or somebody said, or then they responded or you know, just kind of 
teaching about quotation marks. And of course, as, as, as many of you have mentioned already, the, the figurative language is just so great. It's just wonderful in here. I, um, the title alone, you can take so, uh, get so much out of it because, you know, the bird is right. You, you generally hear that phrase as the customer is always right. <laughs> <laughs> so that I, <laughs> that's where my mind goes when I when I read something like this. <laughs> the, the the customer is right, or the customer is always right. right. And so, what the pandemic did was, in a way, stop the consumer society. And the 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 economy as we knew it um, had to come to a halt and uh, required it. Just everybody had time to reflect. Um, what can a different world look like when it's not a consumer society and it's one where you are in tune and aligned with nature and listening to other voices? I don't know. I don't want to get philosophical, but it really <laughs> lends itself for, for a lot of reflection. Right. Which, you know, which is, makes it a lovely and rich experience, you know, an inviting one, I hope, you know, so that, that's the idea of it. Um, yeah. I, I'm noticing where the issue extras, the two issue extras that we have are pandemic vocabulary, which if you are teaching this pandemic issue, this vocabulary sheet might help you. Um, and then the, is this a good job? This isn't very well explained, but this, we have a number of articles in the pandemic issue that look at work during the pandemic. And this, I developed this to kind of go with those articles, but you can, you can use it in any way you want, but, um, I, I, I should probably make that a little bit more clear. But. All right, who looked at uh, my son's first steps? Did anybody do that one? Okay, Leslie, what, tell us what you, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen so we can all see it. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, that's helpful. Um, it's, it's ironic because today um, I was correcting a writing assignment that my class is doing. And it's interesting that my, I went almost quickly to the, um, I think it's the third um, part down where it starts with however, um, because <laughs> that was, I had a student start a sentence with however, and I know that can be debatable and things like that. And I decided to just, I'm letting that go because the whole, um, it, it worked and whatever. And I was so happy to see that. And then it was even brought up in after you read section, um, number uh, two mm -hmm. said, you know, um, study the author's use of the use of the word, however. And, and so I was like, okay, this is good. <laughs> this, it was, uh, uh, really just kind of, um, timely for me, but, uh, perfect. I'm thinking about, um, a writing exercise with this. And I would say my students, again, like uh, Doug mentioned, you have multiple levels. Mm -hmm. um, so I have some students that could maybe work higher than this, but this would be on par with um, a good portion of my students. Um, and so I, I liked the idea of, um, you know, he looks at kind of both things about some positives, but then also, you know, bringing in that however, um, piece. So, you know, the pandemic is, is like that for so many people, right? It's mm -hmm. dual, you know, there's dual <laughs> points in it. So um, just, but I liked the idea of um, having people kind of think about positive things. And, and mm -hmm. I also really liked the part about him saying that he's um, working, his English improved in, in working with his children, because that's something that we really uh, encourage a lot with our students uh, some of their um, homework time or, or independent study time you know we say let us know what you've been doing with your children and that can count you know yeah. so so this was um, you know just uh, fitting for a lot of the things we've been talking about so good no oh, so glad to hear all that Thank you. I read, I read this one also, and but I remember reading this with my students. I guess it was last spring when it came out. I don't know when this came out, mm -hmm. but just trying to look at both sides of the pandemic, you know, that even if you are stuck at home, that there are positives. And so they could really relate to this, 
Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if we could still do that now because it seems like there's nothing good about staying home. <laughs> but, um, you know, but it made for a good discussion of kind right. of like looking at that and what, what is different in your life when you can't go outside of home or go outside very limited. So mm -hmm. we didn't try to write on it, but um, mm -hmm. we did talk about the positives and, and negatives, you know, that you right. still have that fear like they mm -hmm. talked about here. Well, one thing I love about so many submissions we get at the change agent is that they really hold attention. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's just it's just beautiful. It's very moving to me that the tension that that one piece can hold, and that in very few paragraphs and with very few sentences, and with a seemingly kind of straightforward thing like you know, it it just holds all this tension. And I love it and. I think the word however is such a good academic word and, and, it, and it also allows us to express tension and express, oh, now I'm going this way, I was going this way, now I'm going this way, you know, yeah. it just allows for that. And if you have some higher level readers, there's a, uh, you know, number three in the after you read is to read this article by Paula Alfs, um, who also is talking about attention. So you could have some people go off and you go read that while other people kind of stay with this one. Um, and then have them write some sentences with however. And so even if you just have them write a sentence, that is addressing one of those standards mm -hmm. that we, you know, it doesn't have to be a whole essay or even a whole paragraph, but if every class, you know, they have, maybe there's a couple sentences that they write, you know, they try out using this, this word, however, you know, that is great. And also he throws in this really interesting word ruin, which is not, who says ruin? I mean, nobody, we don't, I know it's not a common word, I think for ESL folks. So I don't know, I, I love that that word is in there and we can kind of highlight it. it it's gonna add vocabulary, which is a, also a college and career readiness skill. You wanna be adding vocabulary whenever you can. And um, so just, you know, just noticing these, these pieces, I think it's great. Well, Did anybody think, else look at it? I think like you said, it's like, because his story is simple, and everybody's had some kind of experience with this being at home and like for him to put it down to the simplicity of you know the things we love to watch as parents I mean it was just so good for students to hear and relate to and the pandemic haircut does that same thing oh, I, I read that one too I love yeah she talks about it feels like we're in a war that's I feel that I feel it. <laughs> and then she turns around and says and I gave my, I put my husband on a stool in the bathtub and I cut <laughs> his hair and we laughed out loud about it. And we experienced joy. Mm -hmm. And here's a picture of my husband's haircut. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's kind of like both things are true. And that's so, um, mm -hmm. we don't wanna be skipping over how hard it is for people. And God knows it has been really hard, but we also can do the other thing too, which is notice where there is joy. All right, what was the other one? Um, we will be okay. Aha, uh -huh. did anybody read this one? I, I did, but I also noticed something and I guess it's, it was important for me to notice that you were seeing things when you were, were going over them that I wasn't seeing. If you, if you just use the um, index and you jump to the story, you don't get the same thing that you get when you do the PDF version. Because in the PDF version, you get the, after you read, think about the concept of mutual aid, how does Helen aid her daughter? But if you just click on the article from the index, you don't get that. So that's interesting. I, I, you mean if you if the audio version? No. Well, it's the one with the audio version. Yeah. But so remember when you showed us, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of how to sort by level and find an article with all the articles listed. Yeah. So if you click on the article from there. So so there's three ways to click on it. There's the audio version. We will be okay. And you don't get the you don't get the questions that follow. That's true. That's right. true. And that's what I noticed too. So when other people were talking about questions, it's like, oh, well, I didn't see. Uh, I'm like, I didn't see I those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, the things I I don't think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Um, it's that the PDF is the reproduction of what was of what would have been in the magazine. Yeah. So so, so I think the the PDF gives great um, talking points and writing points, mm -hmm. but I I didn't have that at first. And okay. So I read the article. Okay. Um, I have to say, I was mostly moved 
by the 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 very bottom that told about the woman who wrote the story. The fact that you know she left her husband, um, seven children, and thirteen grandchildren in Nigeria to come to the United States to help her daughter. And it was like, what are you willing to give up to to make things happen that are important to you? Know it's like, yeah. how do you balance the you know choices in life and um, I'm really glad you said that. Don't skip the bios. Yeah. Sometimes the bio is pretty boring. It just says so-and-so is an ESOL class, but, but sometimes there's stuff in there that really helps you see the person. And yeah. I, I, love, I love that you noticed that. Thank you for noticing that. Yeah. I, I really work hard to get people to give me their bios. <laughs> and yeah. So thank you for noticing that. And um, yeah, so yeah, she came, she came here from Nigeria to help her daughter get medical care and she left behind her whole family and she's taking mm-hmm. classes at the Thomas Crane Public Library in Quincy, Mass, you know? And she couldn't even get the medical care because there's a pandemic going on. So she had to become the doctor, you know, it's like, whoa, what, you know, and it reminded me of the haircut, you know, this is seriously much more complicated than, than giving a haircut. But at the same time, right. it's like, we're all willing to do what we have to do to make it better for other people. Right. Yeah, powerful stuff. And I know that all of our learners would have experiences with that. You know, the things that they've had to figure out because Mm -hmm. they couldn't get to the doctor, they couldn't get to their regular caretaker for their children, they couldn't get this resource or this, they had to figure something out, you know. And they might've used mutual aid in some way. So mutual aid, it's a great concept. It's a great phrase. It's complex phrase, mutual aid. It's not common words necessarily. Um, But I also really like the idea of getting learners to think about where they have, where they have aid in their lives. Mm. You know, have you ever done that force field analysis with, with, with your students where they're thinking of goals and and you do this force field analysis where you, what forces are helping you towards your goal and what forces are keeping you from your goal and you get them to identify those forces. And you, you think about amplifying the positive forces and trying to decrease the negative forces. It's not like you can necessarily make them go away, but you could just reduce their impact a little bit maybe. So I, I like to kind of like keep bringing that in for students because it's good to just notice, oh, I do maybe have help in, you know, and just articulate it and maybe even write about it. Yeah. Did anybody else read this one or want to say anything about it? Okay, thank you. That was a really interesting conversation. I was glad to hear hear what everybody had to say. Is anybody, I, I see lots in the chat, but I'm not sure if I, okay. It looks like you all figured out most of it. Uh, any other comments on any of that content? Okay, I wanna um, share our call for articles. And to do that, I want to go to the change agent. Again, it's in the classroom. And then you go down to invite students to write for the change agent. And you can download a PDF of the call for articles. And it's a one pager. And it looks like a fairly dense and intimidating document. It's got a lot of text on it, right? (laughs) A lot going on a lot of bullet points. And what I really I recommend whenever I talk about this with teachers is don't, of course you, you can take from this a couple questions and just give your students the questions if you feel like that's gonna work better for them. But another option, which you might wanna try is consider this a complex document that, and, and in our lives, we get a lot of complex documents that we have to figure out what to do with, you know, whether it's our lease, something from the bank, something from, you know, some government city agency or something, you know, that we have to figure out, we have to sit down and apply ourselves and try to figure out how to make sense of it. So one thing I like to be modeling for people is, you know, you take a complex document, you can break it down, you can try to underline the most important parts and, and, and help them, give them the scaffolding to take on this hard document, not be too intimidated by it. They don't have to understand every single word in it, but just to have the experience of breaking down a hard document. Um, And uh, amazingly, this teacher in Maine, uh, who her name is Moira Taylor, 
she just sent this to me the other day. She said, oh, I made this video and I thought you might like it. And so I'll share it with you. Hi, everybody. I want to share it with you all too. It's seven minutes long. I don't know if I'll play the whole thing, but here, here, let's listen. I'm here to tell you about a great opportunity for doing some writing that can get published in an adult literacy magazine. The magazine is called The Change Agent. The Change Agent is an adult education magazine for social justice. And in the magazine, articles about news and different issues and ideas are published by adult literacy students. So that is you. What I wanna tell you about is they have a new call for articles. That means they want your writing and they want your writing on the topic of work during the pandemic. Many of you have been working during the pandemic. Some of you have lost jobs during this pandemic. Um, maybe some of you have had to fight for safety measures in your work. All of these ideas focus on the theme of work, um, what's been happening with adult literacy students and their work during this uh, very challenging time. Um, many of you are essential workers. Um, and so that's put you on the front lines for um, a very long time. So how do you submit? Let's walk through the process here. So as I said, this is a call for articles. They want your writing. And the first thing that you need to do is when you have your writing, you need to make sure when you submit, you have your email and contact information for yourself and for your teacher. So that's really important so that they, the magazine can contact you if they need to ask any questions when you submit. Let's look a little bit more at the theme here. Um, this is a very broad theme. You can write about any issue that has to do with work during the pandemic. Um, but keep in mind. You get the idea? Mm -hmm. Isn't that fabulous? She goes through, she, it's seven minutes of that, but you know, she kind of, she, she highlights a couple of the prompts, not, she doesn't go through all of them. She highlights just a couple of them, but she is modeling that approach of breaking down a kind of a hard document that might at first look intimidating, but you know, you can, as we all know, cause we all do this, right? How many legal documents do you get where you don't understand a lot of it, but you have to figure out some essential pieces of it and you can't just walk away from it. So you do. That's that kind of practice that I think it's great for our students to have, you know, that's, that will serve them well for future work and academic goals. Uh, so you could, is that available on YouTube? Yes, it is right there on the change agent um, page. So if you go to the change agent and you go to the write for us thing uh, tab, You'll, you can download the call for articles here and you can watch the seven minute video here. And so you can just have your students watch that and then come back and report back, you know, how did that go? What did you think about that? So we've been covering a lot. You all have been amazing. Thank you so much. I just have a couple more little things I wanna share with you. One is I wanna just share this essay writing rubric with you. I have it as a Word doc, um, and I'm hoping that Joan, when she shares the PowerPoint, she can also share this Word doc. Do any of you use a rubric when you're sort of evaluating your students' writing? It's a, it's a, it's a great tool, partly because you give them the rubric in advance and you go over it with them in detail. 
you say, this is what I'm looking for from you. And this is how I'm going to be grading you. I don't know if you use the word grading or evaluating or whatever, we're, you know, and there's a system of, of points, you know, you get a score for, for how well you did on all these different areas. So some students might do great on, you know, one of these and not so great in another, but they'll have transparency both about what you were expecting from them. And then when you evaluate it, where they could do better and where they were strong. So somebody might have an amazing voice, you know, like they, they're just a powerful individual voice that you can really hear coming out in the writing and they score really high on that, but they really need to work on their grammar and their spelling and their conventions. So they score a little bit less. So everybody gets to shine in, in a different way and they get to see exactly where they're at. So I just recommend that you use something like this. And the reason why I'm providing it to you as a Word doc is because you can, you can play with it if you want, you can change it. Um, I just want to mention that NADP has a rubric okay. that um, sort of you have to follow, but but that doesn't mean, I mean, I'm, I am interested. Uh, you can always, um, you know, have some other uh, documents to reference and, and to uh, add to it. But yeah, there's yeah. some, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot some. of rub yeah, there's a lot of rubrics out there. Uh, so, um, but I just I, I I recommend it because of the transparency piece, and and it, and yeah. it really and it really spells it out, and that that way you're inviting the adult learner into your process. You're not just sort of the authoritative grader of essays. You're you're inviting them into these are the things that that matter, you know, in, um, in the world of essay writing. Um, so, so yeah. you may, may I ask the question when you receive submissions, you grade them with that rubric? No. Oh, exactly. all right. The How do you select? I have a question because, yeah. no, really, I have used a change agent for reading and for writing, but just always, whenever I've grabbed an article and we've shared it in class, you you have a very very good introduction, very good body paragraphs, and very good conclusions. And I'm thinking these are ESOL students. How can they write so well? And so that's why I'm asking. Well, do you have some yeah. parameters? Um, yeah, I mean that's a great question, and it goes to really what do I do as an editor? And um, sometimes I do a lot. Sometimes I do a less. Sometimes I get an article where I feel like really and i mean can i speak frankly here you know it's mostly boring because like let's just be perfectly for a lot of what we ask our students to write is kind of boring you know we want them to master the five paragraph essay we want them to write a proper topic sentence with proper evidence it doesn't necessarily mean it's writing that should be published in a national magazine for for peers to read right it might be perfectly competent essay and we want them to achieve that and do that but it's for the most part, not material for a national audience. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So I don't, what I'm looking for is not the perfect paragraph or the perfect, you know, introduction and conclusion. No, 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 that stuff. I appreciate that we have to teach that, but that's not what I'm looking for for the magazine. What I'm looking for for the magazine is, is pieces that are written from the heart and that really show something. Um, or, or not written from the heart, they're research, they're research-based, but they, but they address something important and powerful and meaningful. So, uh, and then as an editor, I, I sometimes work out with people, wow, these sen this sentence, this sentence, and this sentence really belong over here in this paragraph. And then let, let's fix, the, you know, I mean, I do a lot of that sometimes in conjunction with the student and or the teacher, because sometimes I don't hear directly from the student, I get a teacher sends me the writing. So I have to get back to the teacher who then gets back to the student. Um, so there is a process, but I always say the part that I can't do is get the student to speak from the heart. I can easily correct grammar. I can easily add periods when they're needed. I can easily fix spelling, but I can't so easily sit down next to the person and say, come on, you're pulling your punch right here. You're not really telling me what's going on. And I do do that as an editor a lot. I, I'll, I'll say this sentence, you're hinting at something really powerful, but you're, you pull back from it. And I wanna invite you to say more here. This was a really big effort in the mental health issue because you can imagine it's a hard topic. People are bringing up hard things. People wanna skirt over it because it's just too hard. 
And I mean, I had to say to people, if you want to, I invite you to say more here. If you don't want to, I understand and it's totally fine. It might not get published, but you know, but if you feel like being brave and going for it, then please do. And you know, I, a lot of people did. It was it's really powerful stuff that people came up with. Um, does that answer your question at all, Christina? Um, yeah, I guess. Um, I mean, they're, they're sort of yes. I, I, I just want to be able to go to the change agent and be able to reference the articles for also good writing and good organizing of ideas. I, I think I haven't been disappointed at all, mm -hmm. but I always wonder, is mm -hmm. this a safe route to go when I have little time to do lesson planning? And um, would, would, would these articles from this issue um, have a strong thesis statement, have a, a strong connection, the conclusion, will it be connected to the thesis statement mm -hmm. or, or right. you know, but I think, right. I don't know, you do some, some somehow you do a great job that, Okay. That we can use them for writing samples. I think I, I want to I want to suggest that one way to use it as a writing sample is not always that it's the perfect model for what you're talking about. One activity that I've done sometimes is which are the strongest paragraphs here, and which are the weaker ones. I mean, actually, might not have said which are the weaker ones. I don't want to you know I don't want the poor writer of the thing to then look at the published piece and be like, wait, it was weak. What is she saying? You know, so I don't want to do that, but I do think there's a lot of opportunities in the change agent to, to notice where there might be a weaker paragraph, where there isn't the evidence, or there isn't enough evidence, or there isn't much evidence, or it's not very convincing evidence. Like, go ahead, go ahead and say which ones, which paragraphs worked and convinced you and which ones didn't and why. You know, and then as a reader, you're learning how to be a writer. Yes. And yes. I think that's really powerful. We don't, we, you know, the, it's great to share a perfect model, but it's also great to share an imperfect model and to be able to articulate why it's imperfect. And a lot of change agent pieces are imperfect. Let me tell you, there could be slightly incorrect uses of the word, however, <laughs> or questionable, you know, or there could be sometimes there's sentences that don't have a subject, you know, like you can kind of get a little bit off the rails there and you just, you know, is that okay or not? You know, and you can you can debate it in class. You can look at it. You can think about it. You know, and that that's another way to teach. You know, so I, I love the idea of students being able to articulate where something didn't work well. Mm -hmm. Cynthia, you also have a couple comments in the chat about what people are trying to do to, and how hard it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It it takes. It takes time, but it's really effective. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I mean, I always appreciate teachers so much when they respond to the, when they bring the call for articles into their class and invite students to write for the magazine, because I know you're giving yourself a lot more work, honestly. You, you need to work with the student. You know, there's no such thing as the first draft ever being, you know, anything that's going to be that great. You know, people, people need encouragement to go back and to do more. And, but as a teacher, don't worry too much about perfect anything like spelling or anything like that. Just your job is to see if you can pull them out for me. And then I, I, can, <laughs> I can try and take it from there. Um, let's see, uh, Doug says the challenge is a lot of time doing revision. Yeah, rewrite, yep. Yep, bringing the piece to completion is hard. Yeah, yep, I hear you, I hear you. I don't know what to say there. There's, I think, oh, I'm glad somebody's mentioning Google Docs because I, I do think that is really effective and you're bringing in the digital literacy piece at the same time. But uh, teaching, you know, helping your students kind of edit each other and give each other constructive criticism is also a great college and career readiness skill because constructive feedback is not easy to give. You know, it's much easier to say, that was great, I loved it, <laughs> or something like that. 
but but being able to say what was great about it, why it worked for you, what was power, you know, what moved you, being specific, you know, being a, being putting in a comment saying, oh wow, this phrase is great, or oh this phrase I didn't understand, or say more here, that kind of building that uh, process in your classroom is going to build community. It's going to help people feel closer to each other. It's going to make the writer feel really heard and seen. Um, so. I think, you know, trying to use Google Docs and getting people to kind of do peer editing is, is one helpful way that might inspire people, Doug, even to go back and do that rewrite because they felt so well heard and so well paid attention to. Uh, so as much as possible, I don't even take it on for yourself as just your job. See if you can make it horizontal a little bit and see if you can get people working in small groups and supporting each other to write. Cynthia, can I just add something? I know when I had... I had had a specific writing class and I picked out in this call for articles, one question that I thought would resonate with the group. And they all wrote on that topic. It was, you know, how they played, what games they played as a child. And so that made it easier for peer editing, yes. you know, and peer review because they had written on the same thing. Great. So I think if they were all doing different ones, that would be a lot harder. That's a great writing strategy. Just be aware though, I totally appreciate and support that, but, but just be aware that if I get, you know, 20 submissions all on that topic from one class, you know, I'm, it's going to be right. hard for, I'm not going to. Yeah. I did find that there were some that no way would be submitted. Right. <laughs> right. right. Well, I'm noticing the time and I have a final slide with just some of the main takeaways for using the call for articles. One is, you know, the deadline is May 3rd. Um, like, like the video reminded you, please make sure the contact information is on every page. I print, I print out the pages and I can't tell you how many of them, I have no idea, then now I don't know, I can't retrace them back to the email that they came from. So please make sure the page itself has the name and email address on it. And uh, students whose pieces are accepted, they'll get a $50 gift card. I really want the beginner folks to submit Please don't use Google Translate, please. I beg of you, those are the worst. Um, you know, write in English, you know, write at the level that you're at because that's who's gonna read it. Somebody else who's like you, who's reading at that level that you're writing at. That's why I want, you know, that's why I want the beginners and the intermediates. I know it's hard, but you know, just seeing it, what, what people can come up with there would be great. What that is the topic is all, again? What's that? What is the topic for May 3rd? It's work, working work. during a pandemic or not working. Oh. The, oh, 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 okay. So the work during the pandemic is the actual, okay. It's the one that's open, okay. That is the actual topic, deadline May 3rd. Yes. Okay, thank you. you all have been so wonderful to be with for this hour and a half. Thank you so much. Is there any final question or comment or outgoing message, Joan? No, just, <clears throat> sorry, I haven't been talking. I have no voice here either. Um, no, I've, you know, this has been great uh, for me anyway. I mean, it's a good way to think about writing again. I don't know that I've had a chance to talk about writing with anyone, with colleagues in ages. So um, for me, this was good. I hope it was, I hope uh, the rest of you, I hope it, you know, it met your expectations and uh, you walk away with some idea that maybe you hadn't thought about before because that's, and it's something you know you can actually do because to me that's always the the best takeaway it's like oh I can do that that little thing I can do it yeah so. I hope I hope so I hope you all have that and listen feel free to be in touch with me my email address is on the website or the contact page or you can find me Mm -hmm. um, so definitely be in touch. I'd love to hear from you if you try anything out and you want to let me know how it goes. Mm -hmm. And I will forward um, the PowerPoint. I'll forward, I see there's a Word doc that goes with it that you sent me. I'll forward that and I'll send you like the eval and I'll probably do it tomorrow morning when I have both electricity <laughs> and internet <laughs> in my house. <laughs> and no tree on your oh. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. This Thanks, Cynthia. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Everyone. You bye. Bye.